Do you know these famous inmates? Why don't you test yourself and let us know how you did in the comments. I'm your host Yusuf and these are 10 famous American inmates that hid from you. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell to get notified whenever we upload a new video. It's free after all. Anyways, let's see how you do. Number 10, John Wayne Gacy. Gacy is actually the inspiration behind the infamous Pennywise the Clown from hit movies It and It 2. In his early life and career, Gacy performed as a clown to entertain children during events and birthdays and to raise money for charity. His clown alias was Pogo the Clown, but while he was in costume, his demeanor changed from a happy face painter to a remorseless criminal. Gacy tortured and executed 33 people, usually men, between January 1972 and late 1978. He was later convicted of of his crimes and was executed by lethal injection in late 1994. Number 9, Ted Bundy. Bundy was a charismatic and handsome individual. He used his charm to gain trust from his victims and society as a whole. He would typically approach his victims in public places, either feigning a physical impairment such as an injury or impersonating an authority figure before bludgeoning them into unconsciousness and taking them to a secondary location to be strangled. After denying his crimes for over a decade, Ted Bundy confessed to 30 executions committed in seven states over four years. Although he confessed to 30, his true victim total may be higher. Number eight, Timothy McVeigh. Timothy James McVeigh was a veteran of the Gulf conflict who went on to commit extreme acts of violence. He was responsible for the 1995 Oklahoma City tragedy that executed 168 people, injured more than 680 others, and destroyed one third of the Alfred P. Murrah federal building. McVeigh sought revenge against the federal government for the 1993 Waco siege, as well as the 1992 Ruby Ridge incident and American foreign policy. He hoped to inspire a revolution against the federal government and defended the tragedy as a legitimate tactic against what he saw as a tyrannical government. He was arrested shortly after the tragedy and indicted on 160 state offenses and 11 federal offenses, including the use of a weapon of mass destruction. He was found guilty on all counts in 1997 and sentenced to execution by lethal injection. Number seven, Jeffrey Dahmer. Jeffrey Dahmer became known as the Milwaukee Cannibal when the partial remains of his victims, including a severed head in the fridge, were discovered in his apartment. He executed, dismembered, and cannibalized 17 victims between 1978 and 1991. Dahmer was finally caught when an intended victim managed to escape from the building and alert the police. Sentenced to life behind bars, Dahmer's sick and twisted sense of humor didn't make him any friends at Wisconsin's Columbia Correctional Institution. Dahmer was known to play with his food, sculpting his dinner to look like severed limbs and using ketchup as blood. Number six, Thor Nis Christensen. Thor Nis Christensen targeted female students at the University of California in Santa Barbara. Born in Denmark, Christensen was a promising student with a high IQ but he later dropped out of school and began working at a gas station. Christensen stole a pistol from a friend and became obsessed with a fantasy of shooting women, a fantasy he would eventually make a reality. His execution spree later earned him the nickname The Mad Dane. Christensen's execution spree was referred to as look-alike executions, as all his victims were strikingly similar. He was finally caught when his fifth intended victim escaped after being shot in the head. And after her recovery, she met him again in a Los Angeles bar. Number five, Harold Shipman. Harold Shipman, also known as Dr. Demise, is believed to have executed at least 218 patients, although the total is quite likely closer to 250. This doctor practiced in London between 1972 and 1998, worked in two different offices, executing all the while. He wasn't caught until a red flag was raised by several people, including an undertaker who was surprised by the sheer number of cremation certificates Shipman was a part of along with the fact that most of the cases were elderly women found to have passed away in the bed, not at night, but rather during the day when he was on shift. Police mishandled the investigation and Shipman kept executing until he got greedy and tried to concoct a will for a victim that named him beneficiary, which led the victim's daughter to become suspicious. He was finally convicted in 2000. Number four, H.H. H. Holmes. H.H. H. Holmes was a pharmacist who converted a three-story hotel into a psychological and physical torture castle. Holmes moved to Chicago ahead of the 1893 World's Fair and began turning the hotel into a nightmare. The hotel was outfitted with contraptions such as gas lines, secret passages, trap doors, hallways that led to nowhere, chutes to the basement, soundproof padding, and torture devices strewn through a maze. The gas lines were used to incapacitate guests, which he would then cut open on surgical tables. He then burned the bodies in the building's furnace, selling the skeletons to medical schools and running life insurance scams. 
In all, he confessed to more than 30 executions, found only after a fellow scammer turned him in for falling short on a financial agreement. Number three, Samarin Bell. Around 2003, Bell, then working as a janitor at the Morgan Meadows Industrial Park in La Habra, was involved in a check cashing scheme involving several individuals one of whom was his girlfriend, 22-year-old Ineka Edmondson. The operation eventually fell through, and one of the accomplices was arrested, leading Bell to believe that Edmondson had reported them to the police so only she could have access to the bank accounts and steal money from him. To get rid of her, he arranged a meeting with her at his workplace on November 11th, 2003, where, after kissing her hello, he pulled out a gun and shot her three times in the head. Edmondson's body was found on the following day, but at the time, no conclusive evidence linked her boyfriend to the crime. Number two, Daniel Wozniak. Daniel Patrick Wozniak is a former American community theater actor who was convicted of two counts of execution in September 2016. In May 2010, Wozniak executed his neighbor and friend, Private First Class Samuel Eliza Herr, and Herr's friend, Juri Julie Kibuishi, as part of a plan to frame Herr for Kibuishi's execution and steal his combat pay. Wozniak was deeply in debt and wanted money to finance his upcoming wedding and honeymoon. Wozniak and his then fiance, Rachel May Buffett, lived in the same apartment complex as Herr in Costa Mesa, California. After more than five years of court proceedings, Wozniak went to trial and was convicted on two accounts of first degree execution. He was found guilty and sentenced to execution in September 2016. A jury deliberated for one hour and 14 minutes before recommending the execution penalty, one of the shortest execution penalty deliberations in Orange County history. Number one, Donald Dilbeck. On April 11th, 1979, Dilbeck, a 15 year old high school dropout and runaway, was sitting inside a stolen car at a closed park at the beach in Fort Myers Beach, Florida. Someone made a suspicious person complaint about this and Lee County Deputy Lynn Hall arrived and questioned Dilbeck. While being questioned by Deputy Lynn Hall, Dilbeck ran from the car. The deputy chased Dilbeck on foot and caught him. During the struggle that followed, Dilbeck, only 15 years old at the time, managed to get the deputy's gun and shot and fatally wounded him. Dilbeck was arrested and on June 6, 1979, sentenced to life imprisonment. Thanks for watching. Let us know which of these inmates you already knew, and we'll see you next time.